Hi, today we're going to talk about game theory in war, unpredictability, troop allocation, and strategic decision makings. We're going to see three examples and see how important is game theory in war, the limitations of game theory in war, and why we want to use game theory in war, especially when it comes to ground forces. And the most important thing is the allocation of troops. We're going to start looking at the miracle of the Vistula, the battle of the defense of Warsaw in 1920. Then we're going to give a naval example of the battle of the Bismarck Sea, and then a game theory example that I created uh, to show the idea behind it. Uh, all of this, the game theory example, there will be a more detailed video explaining the actual combat behind it, and acting in general as a war game where we implement many 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 of the things we have been taught here in war science in more practical examples now let's get into the video now starting with the battle of the vistula what you observe here where the red army forces that where troops were marching in in from the east and the front line looked something on those lines now, the Red Army was much, much bigger than the uh, uh, Polish Army, and from their perspective, the chance for them to win was almost guaranteed. The only thing that the Poles had, except an almost non-existent army, was geography and a bit of brains, so they knew how to apply game theory. Since you had the river of the Vistula, and that's why it's called the miracle of the Vistula, and most importantly, you had the city of Warsaw, uh, Warsaw, where it's a city, as we have said a million times, are one of the most defensible territories. What the, uh, what the Polish did, they allocated their forces in a very limited capacity across the Vistula River, knowing that it's quite hard to cross a river, especially when there are villages and cities across that river, the same as with Vasho, and at the same time concentrated the majority of their forces in the south with one pure objective, win, win everything or lose. The Poles understood one thing, to win a battle you have to defeat the enemy's force, losing territory means nothing. And that's something that the Soviets were unable to perceive, especially during that period the Soviets didn't really have a doctrine of war, it was more like unga bunga going attack. Uh, it was after the civil war, that's a, another chapter for another time. Now, the Soviets had one primary objective, and that primary objective was to capture the city of Warsaw and push beyond the Vistula River on the west and enter into Germany. The idea of Trotsky back then to spread international revolution. The war was led due to political uh, means and the actual strategic and militaristic concepts were well, practically ignored completely. And so the general plan was like, we have more troops than the enemy, which is going to go forward, uh, spread our forces mainly on the north front. The Poles will eventually break. We have way more troops than them and equipment. Now, the Poles used some ingenious tactics, which the idea was utilize geography and break the enemy using uh, game theory. So if the Soviets actually new basic game theory back then, what they could have done was still allocate quite a lot of forces across the front line, so they would have eventually captured Warsaw, but at the same time, since they had way more resources and troops than the uh, uh, Poles, they could have allocated even more forces on the south, since in any game theory game that you would play, the only outcome that the Poles could have won the, the war was an encirclement that would have been attack from the south. There was no other way they could have beaten. Any attack coming directly from the west would have completely failed for the Poles, mainly because of the bad terrain and the biggest concentration of the Soviet troops. An attack from the south will, will obviously meant the only choice that the uh, 
uh, Paul's hat. Now, that was not a secret. That was a basic understanding concept. What the Poles did was quite a massive gamble, assuming that the Soviets wouldn't understand that and that they, will not they wouldn't have enough forces on the south to defend that area. And actually, they did not. And the Battle of the Istra is a great example where the uh, Poles let the Soviets attack their front line uh, across the border, so across the Vistula and especially uh, Vaso, was where there were very, very bitter fighting. And everyone was trying just to hold on to the city, while at the same time they launched everything they had, and especially their cavalry, to enact a massive encirclement of the fo Soviet forces, which eventually the Soviets... Uh, realizing the disastrous effect that their bad decision making had caused them, fled Poland just to stay alive, leaving behind hundreds and hundreds of thousands of equipments and lost troops. Now that's one example of game theory. Another example of game theory is the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, where the Japanese had to choose between two roads, north and south, uh, to move troops and allocate resources from uh, two areas, uh, so from here to here, while the Allies, the Americans, had a choice to send their planes either in the north or in the south. The idea is, where do I send them? And from the Japanese, where do I go uh, and uh, to avoid the enemy? And here you can see QR example, the one will cause uh, the Japanese to lose uh, fewer ships while the other will cause them to lose uh, more ships. Now the wrong decision again was taken by the Japanese but in this case was not a fault of their own uh, to choose the southern route assuming the Americans would have chosen the northern route mainly in their idea was that it will be shorter so uh, we will have succeeded. Now, going directly to the game theory example we currently have, it's quite similar to the battle of the Vistula. Now, you have two forces, the red team and the black team. The black team are generally the defenders, and the red team are the attackers. Now, here, how should the red team allocate its troops to achieve the victory? Since they have the numerical superiority, and let's assume they're equal, and also let's assume that there is no air power in the game. Uh, where should they focus their attack? Again, with the example of the Battle of the Vistula, is that looking at the geography who we have right here in front of us, you have uh, fortified cities, a very big river across the line, multiple of um, uh, cities, and a mountain range. So again, if the red team will allocate enough forces across the field and maintain some sort of a reserve that, so to cover any unpredictable events uh, that will occur in the war, then they will eventually win in most cases, excluding any political factors that will uh, speak otherwise. But let's assume in this scenario that the Reds are the Soviets and they are using the same logic the Soviets are using. Now, we're not going to get too much into details into the actual combat. I'm going to make two videos actually examining uh, in very detail this uh, uh, combat scenario. Now, uh, so let's start with this trouble, trouble location that we have over here. Now, on the as you can see on the north, northern front, over here on the west, the red the black team has managed to uh, dug in very good defenses, have some generally very good infantry, since, as you know, they don't really know what's happening on the other side, so they don't really know the Soviet concentration, and they are expecting some sort of attack. And, again, like the, uh, like the Poles did, they are concentrating their forces on the south, especially their armor units. Here, the armor units are the units over here, so you can check them over here. The ones with the circle will be armored, the one with the two lines will be mechanized, the one with the slash in this case will be motorized, not recon units. The rest are infantry units, and the one with the crosses will be reinforced infantry, so a much heavier infantry, better artillery, and maybe a bit of armor. Now, going back to our scenario. The main idea of the red team is to launch an attack from the south, 
with the main goal of shocking the enemy, pushing in, and at the same time launch uh, initially a diversion here, then a diversion here, and then completely initiate the attack uh, from the southwest. But on the other hand, the, the Reds, let's not call them Soviets, uh, will unga munga attack towards the river. And you might find this idiotic, but in probably the majority of wars I have studied, a huge portion of generals tend to do this, unga munga on the straight, uh, straight line, because this can be excused for multiple reasons. The idea that um, in the peak of battle that you don't have time to really think about the game theory and it's easy to judge after the fact. But the other one is because a lot of officers really don't understand a lot of concepts of war. I mean, we even have seen what has, what has happened in Ukraine, that they focus on literally attacking the city of Kiev, while they could have exploited their position, capturing way more territory and gaining much better positions to eventually capture Kiev, Kiev rather than just full focusing on the city. Now, as this battle develops, and they are pushing in, we start. We will see the limitations of game theory that will provide. Now, I'm not going to go into details into the battle. You, you will see that if you are interested in another video explaining ex exactly those details. But as the battle progresses, the red team finds itself in a very difficult position, having multiple positions and circle, trying to reorganize the positions. More reinforcements are coming in. They did break the, the line a bit on the west, but their lines and their supply lines and logistics start to crumble. And one of the issues that was happening is because of a lack of a reserve. Now, moving further on, you come to a scenario that they're practically completely locked off out of their supplies. But the game is not over. And here is the important thing, the important ending of game theory. You come to a point where you have these two allocations, so for the black team and the red team, they are cut off. But if the example for uh, they have enough logistics, so let's say they have logistics and so logistical support supplies, I mean, and since they tend they do have quite an, a lot of resources yet, this might not be game over. And the black team might, might have a bit overstretched itself. And here comes the limits of game theory. War is inherently unpredictable, and what makes war unpredictable is the fog of war. The fact that you come to a point that the battle is moving so fast, and the amount of information coming in is so little, even with your own units on the front line, the quality of your units has dramatically fallen. You cannot truly know how strong they truly are. So on paper, it's a motorized division or an armored division, but in reality, it has suffered 60% losses. So it does, it's, not, it's not an armored division anymore. And then you have the case that since you don't have that access of information, randomness becomes such a massive factor that it's practically impossible for you to make any any decisions uh, regarding uh, based on game theory and you just have to go with your gut in make, may, many cases so here we'll see for example uh, three possible scenarios that the red team has one will be immediately try to break out other another one will be to attack on the south so regroup and attack the other one will be continue the attack gaining their objective and uh, hoping that their forces on the east will be able to uh, regroup with their, the rest of the forces they have over there. Now, those things, though, are limited because of the fog of war. There is confusion, there is chaos, disorganization. All of their units have suffered a lot of losses. No plan is a perfect plan. As Molki said, once you go to combat, any plans completely collapse. The only plan you can have is a logistical plan that may uphold, which in the, even in this situation, even such plan has uh, been destroyed. So, uh, and then if we see the red, the black team uh, example is, what do they have to do? 
to the try to attack inlands and risking their position they already achieved to the maintain the control on the west front what if the other team continues to attack and they take their forces from the west and move them here while the opposite team continues to attack if that will cut them off then the whole purpose on the encirclement will become meaningless see even in this case you can't really know because war is inherently unpredictable but the fundamentals of war never change it's up to the commander on the front line to be able to decipher what truly happens and here is a, a tease of, uh, of various examples of how the battle mind developed uh, but that's generally the end of the video thank you for watching uh, please like and subscribe and if you are interested more in the war game I'm going to release one or two videos explaining exactly the war game and how it develops uh, in general thank you for watching and have a good night